Could used guitar sales get any worse? Hey everybody, Jace Allen here. Welcome back to the channel. So I buy and sell a lot of guitars. Uh, I think the first record that I have of a guitar purchase from Goodwill Auctions was in 2018. And that's kind of when I really started getting into uh, sort of buying and selling. I was really trying to find a sound, uh, just playing around with gear. And so I was starting to buy and sell, but it really didn't ramp up until 2022. And that's when I started uh, this YouTube channel, well, the previous YouTube channel that became this YouTube channel. And I bought and sold a ton of guitars on Goodwill auctions. And some from eBay and some from local, the local marketplace. And then it kind of tapered off. And then in 2023, last year, I didn't buy and sell as many. And then this year, uh, because of the YouTube channel and wanting to do reviews, I've been buying and selling um, sort of the cheaper Amazon models of uh, guitars. Not, not Amazon's models, but the cheap models that uh, the Chinese companies sell on Amazon. And then, of course, I bought uh, Squire and a, and a Fender. And a lot of times, uh, one of the criticisms that I hear about buying cheap guitars is that you'll never sell them. You'll never get your money back from them. You'll never be able to sell them. And then lately, uh, what I've been hearing um, is that used guitar sales right now are terrible. And uh, I kind of felt that way too until I actually started looking at the numbers and they're really not as bad as I had originally thought. And you always see YouTube videos with the titles about how the used guitar market is crashing or even the new guitar uh, market is crashing. And it's all this, you know, the sky is falling when it comes to uh, guitar sales. Uh, so how does all this relate to my channel? Well, it's because I buy and sell uh, guitars. So because this channel isn't sponsored by anybody sending me, you know, gear to review, I have to buy my own gear. And so a lot of times I'll buy it, review it. And if it's not something that I'm going to keep, then I'll sell it. And I use reverb mainly uh, for to sell my gear, uh, which is kind of a pain because reverb takes quite a bit of money out and now they charge sales tax, uh, depending on what state you're in, uh, the rate, you know, the rate depends on what state you're in. And so now the, like the final sale price, they're consistent with the past, but now the seller is taking less because I think the buyers know that there's tax in there and then everybody wants free shipping because that's what they're used to. And so your, your margin as a seller, I think is, is, uh, being reduced. And that may be what some people are equating to the used guitar market being so bad. And then what I noticed in the past couple of weeks of selling some of the gear that I had is that it's taken longer to sell, uh, a piece of gear whereas before I could unload something in, in about a week and I think it took me about three weeks to sell a couple things that I had listed and that was even after dropping you know continually dropping the price and that's kind of what I do stick things up on reverb keep dropping the price until they sell and uh, I know it's not you know it's not a business I'm not trying to make a living you know flipping guitars or whatever. Every once in a while, I'll, I'll do pretty good. But basically, in order to keep a channel like this going and have things to review and talk about, you know, I got to move things out so I have a little bit of money left over. And uh, I know it's not sustainable because, you know, you're, you're reducing the amount of money that you, you know, that say you started out with $1,000 and you bought, you know, a handful of guitars and then by the time you go to sell it you're only left with five hundred dollars maybe you lost half maybe you lost thirty percent or whatever and so then you know the amount of money now that you have to buy future gear has been reduced but then with the YouTube channel the hope is that once you become monetized and you gain a following that you'll start to make a little bit of ad revenue and maybe that'll help offset things a little bit so one of my fellow YouTubers, uh, Average Joe's 
gear talk. Uh, he's a little bit bigger channel than mine. He's got uh, over 3,000 uh, subscribers. I'm just under 2,000. And he did a video um, here a couple days ago about, right here, experience with the current guitar market. And then another uh, YouTuber that I follow, uh, Searching for Tone, and uh, he also has talked about um, sort of the sustainability of buying and selling gear um, and, you know, kind of running, <laughs> running up your bill. And, uh, you know, so, uh, but he didn't specifically talk about used sales. Uh, so real quick, I just want to touch on, on, on the comment that I get about how you'll never sell uh, a cheap uh, guitar and I've been selling some guitars this week on reverb and I've uh, been doing okay um, I sold a couple bass guitars um, and now when you look at this total here remember this is this has tax included now so the actual sale price for that was 295 uh, so now reverb tax tax on <laughs> and uh, so I sold a uh, Squire Jaguar bass and then this Squire Affinity jazz bass that I got from so I got that one from uh, Goodwill auctions and so with tax and shipping and handling um, it came in at 181.35 and I ended up selling it for well that's with tax um, 150 plus free shipping, so I'm not sure what the shipping was on it. Uh, shipping, <laughs> I think if anybody should do a video about the a market or the prices of something, it's shipping. Shipping has gone just through the roof. Um, it's so expensive to ship a guitar nowadays that I was pretty shocked today when I sh shipped some stuff out. Okay, so then here's Here's the name brand guitar. So the now a name brand guitar should go for more money, right? Because everybody says, oh, you know, if you have a name brand guitar like a Fender or a Gibson, you know, you'll be able to get your money back from it. That's what people say. They, they tell me all the time in the comments, uh, cheap guitars, you'll never be able to sell them. You'll never get your money back. So this was that Fender standard that I had bought. I it paid almost $700 for it. Could have bought a brand new one for, for less than that uh, this one did have upgraded uh, pickups on it. it had a loaded pick guard with the vintage what are the vintage 59s or whatever the heck they are uh, but that pick guard alone is 299 uh, 299 dollar upgrade but that didn't translate to this being more expensive so yeah my cost on that was 688 um, and I sold it for 500 bucks free shipping. Now apparently this person didn't have to pay tax so that's interesting. So then uh, so then yeah so then I had a, a little website here so if you take say the seven so well 688 is what I paid for it and uh, sold it for what did I say 500 even 500 even and that's not including uh, what it costs to ship. So calculate that out. That's about a 27% loss, uh, which isn't bad, I guess. Um, so then this is a Jet uh, guitar that I, I bought from my friend's uh, guitar shop. Um, I'm not sure what I paid for it, but brand new, it's looking like 349 is the cost. Of that particular guitar, and so uh, I sold it for 225. So if we go back to our calculator here, so it was 349 and 225 is what I sold it for. So that's 35 percent. So it's I don't know. I guess you could say in the ballpark, maybe not. So then the Jet guitars are, you know, they're a Chinese guitar. They're, they're not exactly cheap. Uh, they're hard to find, too, sometimes. 
Um, and then here's a Gear It. This is the Gear It Stratocaster style guitar that I got off of Amazon for right around 90 bucks. And so this one with uh, before tax was 75. So, you know, I guess I didn't do too bad on that. Let's just call it 90. So 16%. So actually that guitar, I, you know, I did pretty well on. So the conventional thinking is that that gear it guitar, you wouldn't be able to sell it because it's cheap, you know, and nobody's going to want it. Um, I sold it for, you know, you know, not too far from retail price. Um, and you can still get them on Amazon as far as I know. And then Tees, this guitar is, I think it retails for 130 uh, with free shipping. And then I got, but that guitar was given to me. So technically I made 90 bucks on it. Um, so that one, you know, again, cheap Chinese guitar, uh, conventional wisdom says you'll never get your money back from it. And then uh, Firefly, this double cut, uh, I think I sold that one for 150, 150 bucks. And those brand new, maybe was 195 or something. So again, the cheap guitars sold, I think just as well as, so, cause here's a Yamaha and I took a bath on this Yamaha cause I think they're 225 retail and got that one for, uh, sold it for 130. So 225, 130, 42%. So I lost almost half, pretty close to half on that. And then again, you know, uh, most often I will choose to eat the shipping costs. This one, I actually charged 25 bucks for shipping, uh, but it went out to California. So I bet it cost me, you know, 40 or 50 bucks to ship it. Um, I shipped, well, the bass guitars I shipped today, one was $40 and that was going uh, somewhere on the East Coast. And then, because I live in Michigan, so, and then the other one was going to Texas. And I think that was over $60 to ship. So, so yeah, so this is the infamous Yamaha Pacifica that I did that video about that everybody got so worked up about, but in that didn't fetch you know, a price. I did better on all the other guitars uh, than I did on this. And then here's a court, and a, people rip on court all the time. And this guitar I sold for basically pretty close to retail because I think that's what they go for new is two ninety five. I could be wrong. I'd have to look it up, but but it wasn't. That's not a bad price. And again, it comes with kind of a disclaimer because I cover shipping costs. A lot of times I'll offer free shipping as an incentive. And so, you know, that eats into your, and then the reverb fees, of course. Uh, I've tried to sell things locally, but that's, I don't know, it's kind of, I'm, I'm living in a small town. And so I don't get, you know, I, things can sit for months before anybody shows any interest. And then here's a Schecter Corsair. This is this guitar, I think retails for fourteen ninety five or something. And so I kind of took a bath on that one too. So and then okay, so then that kind of answers the question about whether you'll be able to sell a cheap guitar. So it you know it appears to me anyway, and from my experience buying and selling, you know there's really no difference. There's people out there that will buy cheap guitars. There's people that will buy expensive guitars. So this notion that you'll never be able to sell a cheap guitar or that nobody will want it is completely false. So then the next question is, is the used guitar market, you know, in a slump? Is it, you know, are things really bad right now? So, uh, so let's look at, this is Squire Affinity. If you go to Reverb and you type in uh, a model, as long as it has a category, and this one does, see this top product, number 20 in solid body, and you go, you go to this price guide, it'll take you 
to a little graph here and you can sort of expand this out. This is over two years and, you're, and it's showing that uh, two years ago the, the highest price was 230 and right now in 2024 sort of the highest price looks like it's 222 so that's not bad so the prices are all over the place and that could be because of I mean this is only showing mint condition ones here I don't know if the graph here is showing oh mint mint yeah okay because you can sort by condition so if you sort from good to mint and go over two years then you get you know prices you know I mean I'm not a statistician but prices seem like they're pretty good um, and then again with the uh, that's so that's sort of a cheaper guitar and then a name brand uh, more of a higher-end guitar of course people will tell me that a made in Mexico Fender is not a high-end guitar or even a good guitar people will argue that all day long um, so player standard or player series good to mint two years prices seem to be downward trending on that one and it could be because they're they're more expensive so you know when the economy gets uh, bad you would assume that people wouldn't be buying more expensive guitars and if they're into guitars and they still want to buy and sell guitars then maybe they'd head towards the uh, cheaper cheaper models so so right now is a buyer's market for a Fender player so and it could be because the standard two uh, player two rather came out um, so let's look at Fender American American let's just do American professional American Professional 2 and we'll go to the price guide and we'll look at that over two years that's trending down too so so they were up in the twelve hundred dollar area but even even now I mean August 12th they've sold a couple one in only good condition for uh, twelve hundred bucks one mint for eleven hundred mint for eleven hundred so I mean you know the the spread here is only two hundred dollars you know so really the loss isn't that that great so and then any anyway so then that, that kind of lets you know that you know maybe prices aren't dropping as drastically you know it's I don't think the sky is falling as bad as some people might think um, let's see what else so then one more thing I wanted to touch on was um, prices over you know like the value of things because that's one thing that people talk about guitars holding their value the Fender that I just sold is a, a limited edition this is the standard so I sold that for 500 bucks and then I sold one with the plus top. This one here, Fender Standard, uh, made in Mexico. So it's very similar. This is 2016. Uh, that had the plus top on it. And the plus tops go for about 850, I think, is what they were going for then. And this was 2000, so this was a couple years ago. And sold that for six twenty two thirty five, and again that was before. Uh, no, I guess that does have tax on it, and I actually charged shipping on that one, so I made so I sold that one for five fifteen plus the shipping, and then of course Reverb takes their cut. So, and I'm not sure what I paid for that one, probably pretty close to six. Um, so yeah. And then, so then the, the, one of the few success stories I have uh, buying and selling gear is this Tom DeLong Stratocaster that I did a review on. And uh, that one, this is my spreadsheet from all the sales that I've done on Goodwill. And you can see all the ones in orange, these are all guitars. So for a while I was doing four 
and eight track recorders. And so then the Tom DeLong is right here and I bought that one for $2,145.56 and I sold it for $3,100. Uh, paid for shipping and then Reverb took their cut. So I actually made out pretty good on that. And I did the same thing with a Martin HD 28 uh, guitar that I got off uh, eBay for I think $2,200 off eBay and I flipped that one and that I think I sold that for over $3,000 also. But it's definitely not a money-making <laughs> operation. So it's really just a passion project. And again, here's a uh, Rick Allen guitar. This was a local guitar shop here. This was their house brand. The guy that owned the shop was Rick Allen. He went to a uh, 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 Korean guitar manufacturer, made these things, and I sold that for you know a couple hundred bucks last year. Um, and that's a brand that you know not too many people know about. So I think that uh, that myth is busted. That if you buy a cheap guitar, you'll never be able to sell it. Uh, I think there's this notion that if you buy a cheap guitar, $100 guitar off of Amazon, it's a cheap piece of junk and you'll never be able to sell it and you might as well just give it away to some kid that wants to learn how to play guitar or throw it in the trash when you're, when you're you know, done using it. Um, that's not been my experience. Um, I think guitar sales are still pretty decent. Um, like I said, it's, it's the way that a small uh, channels uh, sort of function <laughs> especially if you're not monetized yet if you have under a thousand subscribers and under four thousand watch hours um, then basically you're on the hook for all your gear um, so anyway I uh, just want to do that video it wasn't very quick um, geez I'm already over 20 minutes long on this so so anyway that's that uh, thanks for tuning in and we'll see you next time